Java Poet. No, it's not a way to bring a little Shakespeare into your libgdx projects. It's a fantastic way to generate source code programmatically. Yes, that's right, the future is here. Your code is going to write the game for you. Well, not exactly. We're going to focus on something rather small and you can expand on these techniques on your own. What we're going to do is generate source code to create static references for our assets such as sound effects and texture regions. Why would we want to do this though? Well, think about how you use Asset Manager. You add your files to the asset folder, you create an asset manager, and manually add the file paths to load. Put up a loading progress bar. Then, within your game loop, you retrieve those assets via a get method. Sure, that all works fine, but think about a project where you have hundreds of sound effects and animations. The first hit you take is when you use assetmanager.get. String comparisons are expensive. You certainly do not want to do a lookup every single frame for every single entity. So, they tell you to cache the result. That's okay, but think again about those hundreds of files. You'd have to manually write a few lines for every single asset. I actually found myself in this hell with my libgdx vs ray3k jam game. I had hundreds of animations, skins, skeletons to deal with. If I had a better system, I might have had time to add a few more characters. And then your sound engineer decides to rename a file. Now you're a detective, trying to figure out why your game is suddenly not running. Asset not loaded. What do you mean it's not loaded? I typed it exactly. Oh, oh. It's a capital L and only breaks on certain platforms and doesn't show up when you test locally. What the fuck? Using Java Poet resolves both of these issues. My idea is to generate a resources source file with static references to every single asset you need. Coupled with automatic polling of your assets folder, you will never need to write another boilerplate line to load and cache your assets again. This has an added benefit of allowing autocomplete to help you. You no longer need to browse through your files again when you forget a name. Poet is going to handle all of our imports and make sure all the statements are going to be nice and clean. No mess from trying to concatenate a bunch of strings manually. So, let's take this sample project linked in the description. It's a simple demonstration that uses Asset Manager for a few textures and sounds. Before we get into Java Poet, let's write a template of sorts to follow. The idea is that we want to generate this exact file for us every time we run a certain command. Let's call it Resources Template for now and save it in the core project. We make the fields for an Asset Manager, the sound effects, and texture regions. These are useless without values though, so we're going to make a method to create the asset manager and load the files. We're using finish loading for simplicity here, but you should tie this to a progress bar loading screen on your own. Let's start using this in the game code. Open the core class. To save space, we'll do a static import of the resources class. Then we'll implement the resources throughout the game code. Try running the game. With IDEA, you can create a run task by right-clicking the desktop launcher and running the main method. Or run the Gradle task. This consolidates all asset Excuse gathering, me. and you can stop right here if you don't care about automation. Oh, but let's go deeper. First, we have to make a new Gradle subproject. We could put our code generation in desktop, but this is not stuff we want to ship with our actual game. Also, if you make a mistake and generate a bad file, you'll have to fix the file manually before you can run Poet again. Not good! The secret to creating a new subproject is to just copy an existing one. Copy the folder for desktop and name it Automation. Then, open the build.gradle inside to make some modifications. You're just changing the main class here and switching desktop for Automation. You don't need the disk task. Then, let's go to the build.gradle of the root project. Copy the block for desktop and make some more changes. Yes, we want access to libgdx, but we do not want access to the core project while we're actively modifying it. Add the Java Poet dependency. 
while we're here, open the .gitignore file and make sure the automation build files don't get committed for our Git users. The final step is to add to the settings.gradle in the root folder as well. Load the Gradle changes. Not too difficult. It's time to start working on the generator code. In the automation project, rename desktop launcher to generate resources. And change the package to com.ray3k.javapoet.automation. Let's rip out all the core stuff and make our own application adapter. Make a create method. Great, a blank canvas. We need the path to our sound effects, so we'll use some fancy Java techniques to produce a file handle instance. This will be relative to our main project, so we don't have to worry when we move our root folder around or copy it onto other computers. Next, we'll collect the sound effects in the assets folder. We're simply peeking in the folder and finding all the mp3 files. And then we'll create a texture atlas from the associated file and capture every texture region. This is when we get into Java Poet. The actual documentation is pretty good and I do recommend giving it a look over before you dive into this on your own. But for now, I'll give you the quick and dirty version. Poet uses a builder pattern to generate code. So this is how we construct the basic class and make it public. And this is how we add fields to the class. We'll start with the asset manager, continuing with all the sound effects. Not every file name makes for a good variable name. Dash and space are a no-go, for example. Let's write a couple handy methods to clean up the names as we go along. After that, we'll do the same process for the texture regions we collected. Very easy stuff. You can see how this can be expanded to accommodate any kind of asset. Making a method is a little more challenging, but it's still relatively easy. Make the method public, static. We'll create a statement here to set the asset manager. Poet uses formatting very similar to string.format. Notice that I'm using a dollar sign placeholder. $t stands for type, and I pass in assetManager.class as the argument. That ensures that the class name is entered correctly and all appropriate imports are handled. I can use as many placeholders and associated arguments as I want. If all goes well, we should have the same output as we had in our template. Next is to loop through every sound and add the statement to load it. See that I'm passing in the path as $s, which inputs it as a string. It will take my file path and add appropriate escapes and quotes when it types the code. Then I pass in the sound type. We don't really need to dynamically load different texture atlases because this example only needs one. That's an exercise for the coder to do later. We'll just add a simple statement here to load the one we added and to finish loading all assets. Then we add statements to assign the sound variables. Variable names should be passed as literal values. $L. The same for the texture regions. What's left to do is that we need to build the class and write it to a file. This is just a few statements at the end of our method. I don't know what your environment is like, but my indentations are four spaces. So don't forget to set your preferences here. And finally, exit this temporary app. We only need the GL thread for texture atlas. Let's run this bad boy and see what kind of damage we've done. We can right click the generator file and execute it directly to create a run configuration, or we can use the gradle command. Either way, we should have a brand new resources file on our core project. We'll compare to our template. 
If all things go well, it should almost be character for character the exact same file. If it's not, go back to your generator code and massage it a little. If you're satisfied, delete the resources template class. Go to your core project and correct the static import. When you run the game, it should work like before. Put your system to the test. Me. Add some new sound files and make them squawk at intervals in the game. Modify the texture atlas. You can run the generator task manually every time you add a new asset, or you can automatically call it every time you run your game. This is kind of wasteful though since your assets don't usually change that often, and it adds more time to get your run process going. You're done! You've made it to the end. The point of this exercise is to expose you to the automation design pattern. It's really up to you to make the most of it. I use it all the time when I work with my animations and data. It's a matter of applying it to your own workflow. Keep the skies clear, my fellow GDXers! Let's go! 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 Let's go!